and needed some coins to build that dream team you guys have always wanted, make sure to head on over to my sponsor, Buy Madden Coins. They have the cheapest, the quickest, and most reliable coins on the market right now. Head on over to Buy Madden Coins and use code PULA at checkout for 20% off your order. What's going on everybody, it's Poodle back with another video guys and today I'm going to be doing my 2019 to 2020 playoff NFL bracket predictions. Now, this, this, this playoffs is going to be pretty interesting for the most part because there are plenty of powerhouses this year and then compared to years past. Like in years past you always have like two overwhelming favorites such as the Patriots and whoever's on the other side and you got a couple of other guys that could potentially make it but you usually have a pretty good idea. But this year, on each side of the AFC and the NFC there are quite a few powerhouses. The Seahawks have been amazing this year, the 49ers have been powerhouses, Green Packers have been powerhouses. Same with the Saints. Now, their records are phenomenal. All of them only have like two to three losses. The Chiefs are phenomenal. The Ravens are phenomenal. The Texans have been pretty good. And then the Patriots are still the Patriots, no matter what their record is, no matter how they played last week. They're still the Patriots, too. So you always got to count them in. As well as the Buffalo Bills and the Tennessee Titans have been... Oh, the Buffalo Bills have had a solid defense, and the Tennessee Titans have had a random on-fire offense as of late, especially with Derrick Henry and Tannehill. Now, the Eagles, I'm not really too hopeful for in this playoffs, but we're going to go through all these matchups. Because the Eagles have just been plagued by injuries this season, which I think is going to definitely hurt them, especially come playoff time when you really need everyone and everyone's a little worn down. But, guys, let's get into this playoff bracket. So starting from the top left with the Houston Texans and the Buffalo Bills, this matchup's going to be interesting. So the Texans is the story of the crazy clutch quarterback, college-type clutch winner. He has this history. He has a great, great stacked offense. And now the Buffalo Bills, on the other hand, don't exactly have the most stacked offense, but they have a stacked defense. One of the, I think, like a top three defense in the NFL right now, statistically speaking. So it's going to come down to pretty much it's going to be like if you put them at the line, who's going to win their matchup? Because they have a great defense, so the Texans really got to win every down. If the Texans can win every down, they're going to win just because of the fact their offense is so good now. If they let up just a little bit, that defense can become overwhelming. Deshaun Watson gets sacked a ton, and the Buffalo Bills definitely have a great defense. They have a great secondary to get the pressure on. So he didn't have to get in the ball out quickly. Now, at the end of the day, I still think that Deshaun Watson's clutch enough and his offense is great enough to really pull ahead here. Now, the key is going to be to getting ahead of him because, as you know, Buffalo Bill plays with the – they have a solid defense. So if they get up just a little bit, they're going to run that ball with Josh Allen and Devin Singletary and Frank Gore, and they're going to use their defense to stay ahead. They're going to play a slow game. And that is not what the Texans want to get into because the Texans don't really play slow. The Texans typically, they're big hitters, they're fast hitters. So I think that the Texans got to get ahead. But if they do, I think the Texans will be taking this game. And I truthfully think they have a great chance of winning this game. I mean, the Buffalo Bills could pull the upset, but I don't think they'll go too far. I think the Texans have a better chance of going far in this playoffs, more so than the Buffalo Bills will. Now getting into the bottom left, which is the New England Patriots versus Tennessee Titans. Now, this game's going to be interesting because whenever you look at a Patriots matchup, you think auto win like Patriots always win now this year has been the tale of two halves like they started off pretty solid and everyone thought wow the Patriots are going undefeated they don't need any weapons if you guys remember that then the second half is like wow the Patriots need everything they can get they need a B back they need weapons they need this Tom Brady doesn't look the same it's been the tale of two halves this year it's been entirely different now it's kind of upsetting to see the Patriots at this point like I'm not a Patriots fan and again, sadly I'm a Giants fan so I was hoping the Giants could make a playoff appearance this year now in my heart I knew they wouldn't make it but after Daniel Jones had those two first blow-up starts, I thought that they might have had a small outside chance with how bad the NFC East was, but they did not make it. If they were here, they would be the ones to take down the Patriots, and they made it, but they did not. Now, the Patriots here, I think their offense is very, very weak right now. They're very, I don't know, it's not that they're banged up or anything, it's just like, they don't they don't, they don't, they don't get that fire they usually have. Now, remember, something about Tom Brady in the playoffs, things just change. I mean, I'm not, I don't want to count them out. So as badly as I want to say the Titans will upset them, I mean, the thing that the Patriots can't let happen, they can't let the Titans get ahead of them. Derrick Henry has been damn near unstoppable in the last few weeks, or at least the past month minimum, but most of the season he's been pretty great. Just run defense hasn't even been that great to begin with. So I believe that for the Patriots to come away with this game, they're going to have to take a lead because that's when the Patriots are at their best. When they take a slight lead, they can roll Michelle, one of their other five running backs with their great defense. It's been one of the top defenses in the league. So that's the other thing. The Titans have to deal with their defense, which has been insane this year. So Tom, with the way down Tom Brady's defense is this year, they only have to play adequate to still win games. But if Tom Brady can really kick it into playoff mode, um, the Patriots are going to go very far. Do I think they're going to do that? I'm not entirely sure. You guys will see as we continue with the bracket. But the Titans, I want to say they're going to upset the Patriots, but I can't. They're still the Patriots. I can't say that they haven't been knocked out of the first round in years, let alone they haven't even, they, they, they're in the wild card. That's just a weird predicament for me. But we're going to see what ends up happening. But I think the Patriots do end up taking this matchup. All right, so coming over to the right side, we got the Philadelphia Eagles in the top right versus the Seattle Seahawks. Now, don't let the seeding fool you. The Eagles may be fourth and the Seattle Seahawks may be fifth, but that does not tell you the entire story. 
The Seattle Seahawks are merely in fifth because they could not win the division because the 49ers have been too damn great this year. The, four, the, the Eagles have been in the worst division, in a, one of the worst divisions I've seen in a long time with the NFC East this year where everyone seemingly didn't want to make the playoffs. They were letting each other win. And at this point, the Eagles have to lock the fourth seed because they did win the NFC East. But the Eagles are on, like, third-string receivers. They're on second tight ends. Like, their team is so banged up. Carson Wentz has a history of injury. You know, he hasn't been injured yet, but he has had his little – he hasn't had some scares. I just feel like it's going to be hard in the playoffs. Let's say the Eagles even did make it past the Seattle Seahawks. Then the Niners. Then whoever else that they have to go on through all across this road. It's going to be a very tough road for them. I really don't even think if they made it out of the first that they could really go much further. The Philadelphia Eagles have been plagued, like I said, by injuries. And that, that has sucked. And Carson Wentz has not played it down. Like, he has not played playoff football. He's been hurt or they didn't make it. There's been always something with him when it comes to playoff football. I really just don't see it happening. I don't see their road to making it to the Super Bowl. Now, the Seattle Seahawks have been one of the best teams all year. Russell Wilson, is, is he's the captain. Like, he is... He's clutch. He's a leader. He makes things happen. Like He's the guy that could run around the pocket for a minute straight and then make a throw that you wouldn't expect for a touchdown. You wouldn't believe would even happen. Russell Wilson's that kind of guy. He's clutch. He makes things happen. And he's mobile, which is going to go big. That's, that's, that's a big thing. Have you guys ever realized in the playoffs, mobile quarterbacks that make the playoffs always seem to have some kind of special season like Cam Newton, uh, Colin, Colin Kaepernick when he did it, RG3 when he first made the playoffs before towards ACL. There's always been something with teams about mobile quarterbacks that go like that go ham in the playoffs. I think that Russell Wilson's going to need that, especially as teams get tired down. They're already tired down to be in the season. Now, I think the Seahawks do end up taking this game. They did give it. They did bring Lynch back, and it would be cool to see the Seahawks go kind of far with Marshall Lynch. And Marshall Lynch would t- potentially even go as far as he could in the playoffs in his return back. And he's definitely fresh. I saw him last night. He looked pretty good. So hopefully, Seattle Seahawks keep the momentum going. I think they take down the Eagles in this one and move on to the divisional round. Now, down, down to the bottom right matchup, we got the C- New Orleans Saints versus the Minnesota Vikings. Now, this one was one of the toughest games for me to rank or go over because I, I personally love both teams as a football fan. Watching the Saints is just masterful. Watching Kamara, watching Breeze, watching Michael Thomas, watching Taysom Hill, watching Derek Cook. The offense is absolutely crazy. Now, the Minnesota Vikings may not have the craziest looking offense, but they play like one. Dalvin Cook and Madison has been one of the best two-punch duo at running back in the league. Now, not that Madison gets a lot of looks, but he is one of the best backups in the league, and that definitely helps when Dalvin Cook's hurt like he is now. But now they're both kind of hurt. So hopefully, if Dalvin Cook and Madison both come back and they're fine, but I don't think they will be. Dalvin Cook's had some pretty serious like sounding shoulder issues. So I think he's going to have to deal with this, even in the playoffs, which is going to definitely hurt them a little bit. And their defense is solid. But when you just when you stack them up, the Saints' passing attack is better. The Saints' rushing attack, I just give it the eye test. They both look better. I mean, the rushing game is, is actually is actually closer than I, I lead on there. Dalvin Cook and Madison are probably better in the rushing game total than just Alvin Kamara and Matt Murray from the from just a, just a pure athleticism standpoint, but they are a little banged up, and Kamara can do... Kamara and Dalvin kind of match up similarly, but Latavius Murray and Madison, same thing, but I think that they're a little banged up. In my personal opinion, I think the Saints end up taking this game just because Drew Brees has been on fire. He's been on a heater lately. Drew Brees has been sizzling. He's been... Three plus touchdowns almost every game. He's been killing it. He's been unstoppable. Ever since he came back from injury, he's come back fresh. And he's looked better than ever. He's having like a resurgent end of the season right now that we're not used to seeing from him. People last year were saying that he was just going to be efficiency monster. He was going to be a, a low a low volume guy, and that has been anything from the truth. So I think the Saints take this matchup and move on to the divisional round. All right, so back in the top left for the first of the divisional round, we got the Houston Texans and the Baltimore Ravens. Now. Again, there's going to be a similar style game to an extent. They're both going to have mobile young quarterbacks who have both come up big, who are both up-and-coming superstars in the league. I shouldn't even say up-and-coming. They're, they're superstars in this league. Deshaun Jackson, Lamar Jackson, they're rock stars. They're awesome. They make things happen. Now, the run game is going to be the difference. The Texans don't exactly have the strongest run game with Carlos Hyde, although he's had to have moments. I don't think you can trust as much as you can trust Mark Ingram, Gus Edwards, Justice Hill, Lamar Jackson, and everything else you can do in that run game. The defense also, the Ravens defense, ever since about like week eight and on, has been one of the better to best defenses in the NFL. Statistically speaking, they've been pretty good. They picked up Marcus Peters. Marcus Peters may not be the best cornerback, but he makes big plays, and that's what you need in the playoffs, as well as their already stout defense. He had a playmaking aspect to it, which only eases the weight off of Lamar Jackson. Now, Lamar Jackson has not looked like he's slowing down at all. He's been throwing dots. He's been throwing touchdowns. He's been rushing. I think he's going to probably break. He's probably going to break some kind of like a rushing playoff record if he goes all the way. Now, I think that there's a small chance that the Texans could compete, but I I really don't think it's going to be all that close. I think it might be like 
a 28 to 21 game. I really don't see. I see the Texans maybe competing. I don't think they'll be blown out. I think they'll compete, but I do not see them as one of the winners. I think there was a better chance that the Texans keep it close than them winning. I really don't think they're going to end up winning this game. I think the Ravens rushing attack. The Ravens rushing attack is like just too. It's 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 infuriating. Like imagine a team going up on you and you need to get a stop and they just keep running the ball and grinding out and just continuously moving on you and there's nothing you can do about it and then eventually you get tired out and bam they hit you with one of those deep passes or something and it's over the Ravens the Ravens often they have it going this year they have they have one of those they're gonna have one of those special runs but I think they do advance now on to the next divisional matchup we got the Kansas City Chiefs and the New England Patriots now we know how this matchup ended last year if you guys remember the Chiefs were seconds away from moving on to the playoffs and D Ford went offsides on a fourth down play in which Tom Brady ended up not converting the fourth down. So now many might say that the only reason Tom Brady didn't convert is because the guy went offsides and it pressured him a little bit more than he should have possibly. But the offside was a very dumb offside. I don't really think it impacted the play. The guy kind of just jumped a little bit or he was lined up. He was like lined up offsides. which wouldn't really, but like so barely, I don't think it really impacted the play too much. But in Tom Brady's favor, of course, they called it. Tom Brady got another chance. And they would end up winning that game. And the Chiefs got knocked out of a playoff round that I think they truthfully outplayed the Patriots that game. And that was last year's Patriots. Patriots that were still a lot better. Were playing great. Really had it going last year. Had one of the better playoff runs they've had in a few years. As well as they didn't suck as much as they do this year. Now, their defense is much improved since last year, statistically. But their offense is much down. It was very down. So I think that's definitely going to hurt them. Kansas City, as of late, as he, they've done the opposite. Their offense has been equally as explosive as ever. Obviously, Pat Mahomes hasn't thrown as many touchdowns this year, but that also attributes to injury and a bunch of other things. But as when you look at them, they're powerhouses per usual, and their defense has been much improved. Last year, last year, Kansas City came out there with a massive hole in defense. They just had to score a lot and then let a lot of touchdowns and score a lot. It, w- it was tiring for Pat Mahomes. That's why he had 50 touchdowns because he had to. He just had to constantly throw, throw, throw because they were always they were always competing in shootouts. This year, the defense has given him a lot a lot more of leeway. They've been able to rush a little bit more. They've been able to just rely on scoring and then relaxing for a little bit in comparison to having to score every single time they touch the field, which I think will help him a little bit in keeping him a little well-rested for the playoffs, as well as I think they're still as good as ever, if not better. So I actually think the, I think the Chiefs end up taking this game because of the Patriots. Don't look like they have it anymore. Now, it's the Patriots. I know I'm going to eat my words for saying this, but Tom Brady's looking like he's finally falling off that Max Keller and Cliff theory. I think it's finally happening. Now, it's not just so much him. His weapons aren't all there. He doesn't have AB, which he never really had, but we thought he might have. Sonny Michelle hasn't really looked as great this year. Their offense as a whole just has looked kind of off this year. Losing Gronk has definitely hurt him a bit. Now, it's hard to say Gronk really hurt him that much because... And in realism, like, Gronk has missed a, a few of the Super Bowls and a few of the playoff matchups, and Tom Brady's been just fine. But Tom Brady was also younger then, so now that he's older, it would have definitely been nice to have that outlet big guy in the red zone you could always focus on. But it is what it is. And moving on to the right side of the bracket, we got the Seattle Seahawks versus the 49ers in the top right. Now, this one's a really hard game. As you saw yesterday, it was a close game. It went down to the wire. Marshall Lynch did really, really good against them. They ended up losing, I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure that the Seahawks ended up taking that L, and... It was a very close game. Now, here's the difference here. Defensively, when it comes to defensively, the uh, Seattle Seahawks do not out, cannot outplay, de- outplay the 49ers in defense. I believe the defense of the 49ers is stout. It's one of the top three defenses in the league. They've been great at run defense. They've been great at pass rushing. They've been great in secondary. Now, Richard Sherman was a little banged up a few weeks ago. Hopefully, he's back up to full strength. They do have a first-round bye, which definitely helps because Richard Sherman was not looking too great a few weeks ago. But this first-round bye is definitely going to help him as a whole, and they will get everyone back. Now, on the offensive side of the ball, the 49ers don't look like a top offense in the league, but they play like one. That is the Mike Shanahan effect. He's one of the greatest coaches I've seen. Like, since I've been watching football, he's one of the greatest coaches I've ever watched. Not the greatest. We have Bill Belichick and a few other guys. We have Sean Payton. But Mike Shanahan, has. Tra- I've watched him single-handedly transform the Falcons into a Super Bowl-caliber team. He has now transformed the 49ers into a Super Bowl-caliber team. Their running attack of Raheem Mustard, Tevin Coleman, and Matt Breida has looked like like one of the best rushing attacks in the league. He lets them all eat. They all can get like, they'll all get eight carries and somehow still put up a stat line that you think from a regular running back. They have like 100 yards and eight carries, seven yards and six carries, two touchdowns. Like their rushing attack has looked phenomenal. It's looked unstoppable. They have some kind of like, I, I can't even describe it, but it has looked great. And their quarterback Garoppolo, and when the year first started, he did not look like the guy they paid, but he's progressively played into his contract 
and played into his own shoes after a while. But I understand he came off a big injury. And on top of that, he's never really had a career back off of that. Like, he just had those few games for the Niners and the few games for the Pats. He had no confidence coming into this year, coming off an injury, probably scared to play. He's definitely looked a lot better in weeks. He's had a few five touchdown weeks. Well, not a few, probably like one. He had a few three touchdown weeks or four touchdown weeks. He's had a really great few games. So I think if he can take that into the playoffs, and he could really prove in this playoffs with a few wins here that he is one of the better quarterbacks in the league, or one of the better quarterbacks, I want to call him the best, and he could really lead a Super Bowl a team to the Super Bowl. So I honestly think here that the 49ers end up taking this matchup. I think they are definitely going to go far in this playoff run, and they're going to do great. Now coming to the bottom right is going to be the Green Bay Packers and the Saints. Now personally, this one was a tough matchup for me. I really love the Saints. I really love the, uh, the Packers. I think they both play a great style of football. I really do. Now the Packers... Have the, they have those weeks. Sometimes they look like the best team in the league. Sometimes they can just barely compete. Yesterday, they just barely scraped by the Lions, and it, it was a divisional matchup, and you have to understand divisional matchups have a tendency to have moments like that. Now, I personally think that the Saints have the better offense. Michael Thomas, I think, is going to be better than Devonta Adams in this playoffs, as well as Drew Brees has been playing way better than Aaron Rodgers. Aaron Rodgers has been great, but Drew Brees has looked different in the last few weeks. And their rushing attack, I think they're pretty similar. Aaron Jones and them, though, their stats, I think, are a little bit inflated just by the level of the offense that the, the, the Packers have had with how many reds and opportunities they have. From a pure rushing standpoint, I think I think Lap Murray and Kamara is a better backfield than just Aaron Jones and Jamal Williams. Now, Alvin Kamara obviously hasn't played up to par this year, but he's definitely still one of the best talents that running back this league has had in a while. And defensively, they stack up pretty similar. The, the Packers' defense has been great, as well as the, the uh, Saints' defense. They're not top defenses. I wouldn't call them a top three or four defense, but they've definitely been within the top 10 range in their own respective rights. Now, I honestly think that the Saints end up taking this matchup. I think Drew Brees is looking for his next ring that he hasn't seen in years. That he hasn't. He, I think he's finally looking to go far in the playoffs again. I think he could do it this year. Now, I think the Saints are moving on. The Packers are staying home, and the Saints are going to... It's going to be a close game, but they're going to get it. So we're in the conference championship now, starting on the top left with the Ravens and the Chiefs. Now, this is a much... If these four games end up happening right here... These are going to be one of the most watched Super Bowls or most watched playoffs in a while. This is going to be a crazy matchup that everyone's been waiting to see. Now, the Ravens and the Chiefs game is going to be a high-scoring affair. The Ravens aren't going to be able to play typical Ravens style. They're not going to be able to go up and just score. Not, I mean, they're not going to be able to go up and run and then score. Like At least the Ravens, though, the one thing I give them is that they might run the ball to, you know, to choose some clock, and they still end up dropping 50. They don't even mean to. They just like... They just mess around and drop a quick 50. So, I mean, I don't even think that it's it's a matter of not running the ball. But I think Lamar will have to probably pass a little bit more in this matchup than he has to before. And that's fine because many people say he's a running back. I think this year he's proved that he's much more and he can be a potential. He could be a passer. Like, he could be a legitimate pocket passer. That's how he's played this year, like a pocket passer. Although he's rushed a ton. I'm not saying he's not he's not a standard pocket passer. He doesn't sit in the pocket. He runs around and does all this stuff. But he has shown the ability to stand in the pocket, show poise, and still throw great passes while also being able to be a mobile rushing first quarterback. He's able to do both. It's been phenomenal. So I think that's going to be the difference in this game. Pat Mahomes is great. His injury has limited him a lot, as you guys can see. I don't know if you've been watching the Chiefs games. That brace on his knee, I don't know if it's still on anymore, but you can see he runs scared now. He does not take hits. He goes down early, which limits a lot. Like, And quite honestly, this is a game of inches, and there's times where I've seen Pat Mahomes have an easy touchdown a first down, and he goes down early because he doesn't want to get hit because he knows he's going to get hit right when he hits the line. And he's scared to get re-hurt again, which is great for his career. It's great for his money. I understand that. I, I, I actually would rather he do that. But Lamar Jackson doesn't need to even do that because he's going to outrun you. He doesn't he doesn't have that opportunity. He, he'll take a hit if he has to, although he's gotten a lot smarter with not taking hits. I honestly think that'll be the difference. I think it's going to be a close game, like a 28-21, and not even more, like 28-24. I think it's going to be like, like 31-28. I think it's going to be very, very close. I really do think this game's going to go down to the wire. But I think, to, I think Lamar Jackson just has the juice this year. I think he's got it going. I think Lamar Jackson ends up taking this matchup and the Ravens end up moving on. Now, coming over to the right side, I think we got what well, we do got, the Saints versus the 49ers. This game is one of the most anticipated games in a while as well. Two high-powered offenses, two top defenses, two, well, one Hall of Fame quarterback, one great quarterback. It's just, it's going to be great. And this game is tough. For, it was tough for me to do. Now, the 49ers on one hand, like I said, have the great rushing attack. They have a great defense. They've looked solid all year now. As much as on paper, you want to say the Saints are better. As much on paper, you want to say half these teams are better than the Niners. The Niners just got to go. And they're that team that just wins. Like, they don't have to win. They have a great offense, a great system. They don't have to win. It's not about their players. It's about their team. That's the one thing about Mike Shannon offenses that I like. 
it's always team oriented not player oriented like every player is going to eat every player is going to get a fair share and it's very hard to stop them because they're not looking at one guy they're looking at the whole the whole offense going to play now the Saints on the other hand they have a top offense they've been great but the Niners have had a lot of teams numbers this year I really end up thinking the Niners come away with this game overall as a whole I think the Niners end up moving on to the Super Bowl because they just this Niners win games and it's just looking like one of those storybook seasons where they go all the way they might not win at all but they do go all the way, and they make it very, very far in the playoffs. So I will be advancing the Niners in this one. All right, so we're in this Super Bowl matchup. Now, it's the Ravens versus the 49ers. Now, this is a, like, 2013-style rematch, if I got the year right, when the Ravens had Flacco, and they versus Kaepernick in the playoffs in the Super Bowl. This would be very, very cool. This would be a very fun Super Bowl to watch. I actually have a shirt of the Ravens versus uh, Niners from when Cal and Kaepernick and Flacco were there. This is one of my favorite Super Bowls ever to watch with the whole blackout that happened. And the, the big comeback the uh, 49ers almost made. This will be super cool to see. Now, this matchup is going to come down to a heavy amount of rushing now. Sometimes teams change their strategy going into big games. Like, maybe they'll come out pass heavy because they know the Ravens are going to rush or vice versa. Or they think that the Ravens are going to start off rushing, so they'll come out pass heavy. I, they could, but I think they should keep their formula. The formula is going to be a heavy running game. We're going to see two of the most masterful offenses in a long time go up against each other. There's going to be a game of who can coach. This is going to be a game of coaching. They both have to stock. They both have top defenses. Although the Niners' defense is probably a, sl a slight tick better. They both have insane offenses, although, again, the Ravens' offense might be a little bit better. So I think they're very, very matched, like very, very close match. But I think it's going to be a game of coaching. This one is going to come down to who can coach better. Which coach is going to put up the better scheme against each other? Can the 49ers coach slow down the Ravens' rushing attack enough to really dam dampen them? Can they shut down just Lamar Jackson so that he has to only pass? Can they do any of those things? And if they can, if they can stop the hole, if they can clog the hole, if they can fill the gaps, if they can QB contain, if they can do all those things. Which I don't think I don't think you could stop Lamar. I think you could merely slow him down, which could be enough with how good the all oh, 49ers have been, and vice versa. Can the Ravens stop the three-headed rushing attack of the Niners? Can they slow down their passing attack? Can they make sure that Kittle does not get loose over the the sec uh, the, the middle linebackers of the Ravens? It's all going to come down to coaching. And I personally think that I I want to say John Harbaugh has the experience. He's been to Super Bowl before. He's been to Super Bowl before, and he's won them. John Harbaugh is an amazing coach. He has a Longer track record than Mike Shanahan, although I think Shanahan might be the better offensive coach. I don't know if he's the better overall coach. I honestly do think the Ravens have the edge in this one. I think that the Ravens have the better quarterback. They have the better rushing attack, and they have a similar defense. So I think they will be taking this one, because sometimes in a big game like this, the better quarterback ends up winning, and that's who he is. I mean, Jim, Jim Garoppolo has been relying on his team. Lamar relies on his team while also being a guy that can easily take over, like a LeBron type style guy. So I think that I think the Ravens end up taking this one. I think they get I think the 49ers get outcoached and the Ravens end up taking Super Bowl 2019-2020. I think Super Bowl MVP will most likely be Lamar Jackson, as well as I think he'll probably rush for hundred yards in this matchup. I think he should go wild. The only thing limiting Lamar will be is if he happens to get hurt, you know, God forbid he gets hurt in the playoffs. But with that kind of running style, sometimes in the playoffs you do crazy things while running. So as long as he can stay healthy and protect himself in the playoffs, I think he can easily go all the way and this can happen. I think this game ends up being a lot closer than many may think. I don't think it ends up being a blowout on either side. I think it's going to be a hard fall game down to the wire with two offenses that seem to score every time they're out with the ball. I think it'll probably be somewhere like in the 28-31 or 38-31 to Anywhere within those ranges, I think those are like close to the final scores. I think it's going to be a high scoring affair. I don't think it's going to go crazy scoring because sometimes in the Super Bowl defenses step up and they don't even let the score get that high. But you really never know. Now, I think, like I said, I think the Ravens come away with this one. I think they're going to make it happen at the end. And I really think, I really do think that the Ravens got the 49ers number in this one. Now, this will be a storybook ending. I don't know if it's too practical, if it's too, too predictable. This will be the thing to say. But I think the the Ravens end up taking this one and they end up being the 20. 1920 Super Bowl champions overall. It would be the perfect end to the season with Lamar Jackson inevitably probably taking home the uh, MVP of the NFL season, as well as one of the most improved players coming off of his rookie year and everything else. This would just be this will this will solidify Lamar Jackson's early career. And if he can keep this going on for years on end after this, I think it will really go a long way and solidify. He's on pace for one of those types of one of those types of careers. You guys know what I'm talking about. So this would be a great way to solidify it already as early as it is and see what he can potentially do. Oh, guys, that's about it for this video. I hope you guys did enjoy my playoff bracket. I hope this was entertaining. I hope this was interesting. I hope that these predictions were true. I think that this is going to happen. I think this is going to be 100% correct. Hopefully it is. Hopefully we can come back to this Super Bowl time and we can see how many things we got right. So hopefully you guys can come back and check it out. But that's about it, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. I'm out. See you guys in the next video. Peace.